<laughs> All right, Sarah, how's it going? Jesus yeah. H, what is happening here? You know, I, I, I tell you, as far as I try my best with being technology savvy and being savvy with all these things. And even then, you know, recently there's times where it asks you to update an app or there's something with the phone or computer. Either way, thank you for the time. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm very excited to, you know, to be able to dig into uh, your work as well as, you know, things that led up to that and, and just personal interests as far as, uh, you know, uh, listening to interviews, reading interviews, um, and, uh, you know, how you got into this. So as far as, you know, just kicking everything off uh, from early on, um, What's maybe a television series or, or a movie that really resonated with you and, and, you know, the kind of relationship that you had with, uh, with such? Uh, um, like early in life or like that got me into, um, I pro probably Wizard of Oz as a kid. I'd watch it like three times a day. Oh man, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I think at different points in my life, I want to have different people in that movie. Like I wanted the ruby slippers, and then I wanted to be Glinda, and then I wanted to be the Wicked Witch, who I now think is the uh, sartorial winner <laughs> from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, um, now, yeah. was that something? Was that something like that? Was that an, an, like something from your parents or your grandparents that you remember introducing you to that, or maybe stumbling upon a VHS copy? Or it was a VHS. Yeah, it was taped okay. off. TV at some point. My grandparents had a closet full of, um, D like, they would tape Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune every single night. I don't know why, because they wouldn't rewatch them, but then occasionally they'd find movies. There was this one called, um, I think it's a Disney movie. It, it's like the Mr. Boogity series. <laughs> it was okay. called Black Boogity. And it was, like, a very scary for kids movie. And uh, so they had that and uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> And Wizard of Oz, and we'd watch them. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, you said it was called Mr. Boogity? Mr. Boogity, yeah. And he was ever... like, boogity, boogity, boo. And it was it scared <laughs> the hell out of me. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if I've, I've ever heard of that. I mean, that sounds it's awesome. I, <laughs> I... You can look it up, and, like, it's. It, I think it's pretty impressive for a kid's show. Like, it, it's, it's creepy. Was this, like, a 60s or 70s thing? No. Or 80s? <laughs> Early 80s, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Man, I, I, I'm excited. You know, and that, that's the thing that's always so fun within, like, you have things like how, you know, for instance, you have, like, the Toxic Avenger, but yet they made, like, the Toxic Crusaders cartoon, you know, where it's like, there's still, this is very much based on something that's, like, intimidating and scary, but yeah. very fun. <laughs> No, yeah. but okay. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, so uh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll have to check into that. That's uh, is it like a live action? It's not like a cartoon series or anything like that. Yeah, it's live. It's live. Man, oh, that's awesome. So now, did that end up? Oh, I'm go uh, sorry. Go ahead. I think he would possess people. Oh, really? Yeah. I think so. It was very scary. Oh. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so was this kind of like your introduction as far as horror? I know that you've mentioned different movies and going to see in theater. And uh, was that kind of like the, the start for you as far as that love? I think, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, I think I just always liked anything to do with ghosts and like anything kind of, kind of scary or spooky. It was just sort of fascinating. So, um, so then when my parents decided I was old enough, and I, I don't know that they were correct in their determination, but like when I was around <laughs> seven or eight, they were like, sure, you can watch, you guys can rent Poltergeist. And, and I, it wasn't, I, like, it, I was really messed up by it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's insane to think of like that movie or Jaws being PG. Like, obviously it was a different time, but... You know, still even today, they still remain with those labels, and it's like, yo, I do not think that this is PG. <laughs> really scary. Um, and then not too long after that, it was like the Evil Dead. And the the thing is, like, I really liked horror, but it it really, really scared me, like very, very much. And um, I, sorry, I just saw someone I know in the comments um, got distracted. It's okay. um, but I'm not going to say who they are. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, oh, evil, yeah. evil Dead. Yeah. 
Yeah, my brother and I, whenever we'd go to rent movies, we would just like wander through the horror section and we'd just stare at all the covers of the movies, but we'd just be like, oh, that one looks too scary. We can't handle it. So we would just sort of like gawk at it all and then usually rewatch the same ones that we, we liked. So like, I, you know, in the space of a year, I saw Poltergeist and the Evil Dead like 20 times each because we were just <laughs> renting it. <laughs> it was a nice way to kind of like conquer it to be like, I'm not... Not scared of this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's that's awesome. I mean, does anything come to mind as far as those covers that really, you know, were pushing you? Like, man, I want to dive into this, but it's it's a little too far so far. Uh, the Salem's Lot was a really scary <laughs> cover, um, which I didn't watch until like two or three years ago. Um, but the book is really scary, so. Yeah, it is. Right. And then... Um, is it house that ding dong you're dead <laughs> yes with the, the skeleton hand in the doorbell yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and i mean the evil dead cover was just like classic we really had to work work up the nerve to rent that one nice now like when you went to go and, and and you saw something like evil dead 2 was that something as fulfilling as watching the first one or were you kind of put off with that how silly it was and uh you know kind of the comedic no i didn't I think it was silly. I thought it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, got it. I was pretty much just as scared by the second one. When <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, and t you know, you, you touch on, you know, this, this video shop and, you know, you've kind of mentioned uh, a local theater or a theater in general in Vancouver there that was local to you. Bring us back, you know, to kind of describing what was special about these places. Maybe they had certain arcade games, maybe a smell going into these places, poster art, you know, what, what was cool about these places to you that still remains in memory? Um, just like just about theaters and video stores in general, or what was that? Whatever was local to you. I mean, local. I mean, growing up, um, it was a smaller city, so um, it wasn't really. It was like when I was older, like seventeen, eighteen, and moved to Vancouver. Um, and there were a couple video stores that were so good, and at least one of them is still around. I think Black Dog. Um, and then, uh, well, all the theaters were great, but there was one that I would go to on Granville all the time and near it, there was a, an arcade that I would go to, um, my dad and brother and I used to really like to play pinball. So I'd go play pinball a bunch. Um, and I, I remember, I remember it fondly, but I also like it what can I say? One of the things about it is like the guy who would give out the quarters would be at this kind of like um, podium and he was like, wouldn't crack a smile, just like not friendly at all. Wouldn't say a word to you. You'd go give him your dollar and he'd like reach into a pouch and just like without looking, without counting and without trying would immediately <laughs> out the quarters. Like it was a magic trick. It was incredible. <laughs> And I was like, why does he always feel so, like funny with me? Maybe he's like that with everyone. And then I was like, and why, whenever I'm playing pinball, like I'm doing my thing, why, why are like men always coming over to me and like, like, I mean, sometimes you play, like, you'll just be like, oh, can we play multiplayers or whatever? But like, they're being kind of like awkward and weird. I don't understand what's going on. And then, and this is after years of going there. One time I walked in and realized there was a huge banner at, like in the middle of the store hand painted because it was this old place and it was like girly films and in the back of the arcade were all these like peep show video oh, no. so it was like this weird like porn theater arcade and <laughs> oh, just, no it's because i was just like i just want to play medieval madness i just want to like <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that all on um, the Twilight Zone table. Like, anyway, it was... What the fuck? Yeah. So this was just an arcade, and then, like, it was, like, a freak shop in the back of it? So they were, like... <laughs> I'm just trying to picture this. This is yeah, wild. I would booths, and you'd put quarters in, uh -huh. and there's a bench, and then there'd be, like, <laughs> like a slit sort of cut in the in the plywood, and you'd look through it, and then these, like, super eight, like, 30-second <laughs> super eight porn would just be projected inside this, like, 
thing. And then you have to put in more recorders to watch. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, through time, that just, you know, it, it just kind of like re elevates things of thinking of like through time, like who had this idea? You know, you're going to obviously probably draw children to an arcade and then you have shit like that. Wow. That, that yeah. seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> it's, like, it's a idea. It's a very, very strange idea. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. Wow. That is absolutely insane. Uh, not the memory that I was, uh, I was drawing up, but absolutely <laughs> never anything I've heard before. Uh, oh my God, that is that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, very very notable to tell. So that's that's uh, that's great. Uh, with, with I mean, so in your interviews, and this was something that was kind of briefly touched on, or maybe I just hadn't hit on, you know, uh, seeing or reading more. But you've mentioned as far as having a real life, you know, horror, so to speak of your own, as far as living in a haunted house, mm -hmm. what, you know, if, if you don't mind, you're kind of, you know, touching on some of that. I know you mentioned at one point after you guys had moved out that your family had all kind of had their own individual stories. Mm -hmm. What, you know, were some of these experiences? Cause this is the stuff that uh, truly scares me. Horror movies don't do it so more uh, people seeing things and shit moving. That's uh, too far. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because um, my it, none of us talked about it, but we like um, at, like you said after we moved to a new house, we all kind of started talking, and then eventually we're like, oh, we were all just terrified in that house all the time, um, and it it was just like generally just creepy, like especially at night. So my brother and I both would just like put the blanket over your head and don't move like don't let anyone <laughs> see that you're awake you know that kind of like kid fear but it's sort of like afraid of the dark but um yeah. there, there were a number of strange things that happened but um for me one of the most memorable was um i, I walked through the kitchen as i passed through it and i had my back to it i heard this noise and turned around and like all the chairs were just thrown like across the kitchen like they were at the table when I walked in and I turned around and they were just like at, at the corners of the room. Now, was this like audible? Like you could hear yeah. everything moving or it was, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. And, and the, I, I think one of the strangest things about it to me is that like, because I was just sort of obsessed with ghosts and like not seeing them and being afraid of them, you'd think that, I would have been way more scared, but it's just sort of like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> so I just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I and like, <laughs> it like became just a regular thing. Like it's an annoy annoying little brother. Like you're just like, ah, I, I can't deal with you today. I have shit to do. I have my hair to do and get dressed and yeah exactly. <laughs> oh my lord that's insane so i mean did did your like siblings as well did they have you know similar things or were they actually seeing you know a, a ghost of some sort i mean how how what was their story i don't it's funny i don't remember i think this is like just bad big sister thing but i don't remember anything that my brother ever said about yeah. it i was just oh. like, shut up sean but um <laughs> My uh, my parents both saw, and my cousin actually, he stayed with us for a little while, and they, they all saw the same ghost, um, just sort of like, they were like, it wasn't clear if it was like, like we thought it was your mom at first, because she had long black hair, but then it was like, is she wearing a cloak? Is she wearing a dress? But it like wasn't her, you know, like they just sort of see someone move through a room and then afterwards be like, wait, what was that? You know what I mean? Weird. So, oh my God all like had these like bizarre experiences but then you just sort of like huh like can't process it wow uh, yeah i mean was there ever like have you ever gone back and dug into any of the history of the house or was it just kind of like a better thing of like ah that was then and we will move on from here yeah pretty much i mean um when we did move out of it um <laughs> these kids a, a family moved into it after us and um one the younger kid was played hockey with my brother and the older kid i had a huge crush on 
And um, we were at a hockey game once and uh, the parents were talking and my mom was like, oh, you moved into that house? Oh, oh. it's so good. And the, the, the mom, I don't remember their name, but like was so furious. Like, why would you tell me that? <laughs> that and then like I, I was crude the the kid I had a crush on like would not talk to me anymore <laughs> from a weird like ghost family so. oh shit you know and it's so weird so like myself I guess I've never had anything where I've ever seen it anything like that I've ever experienced that however there within you know having my own house there's a house that's just down the street from us and my neighbor has lived here for absolutely just forever since this neighborhood basically has existed. And he one day was telling me, he was like, you know, somebody committed suicide in that garage, you know? And I'm like, really? And it just so happens to be the same house that every couple of years is up for sale, you know? And I always like really want to go over at some point and just ask, but then I'm like, God, what if they, aren't having anything and they're just like, ah, oh, the house just isn't for me. And then I add that on top of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So I, I just wanted to dig into that. I didn't want to get, you know, yep. like too personal or anything, oh. but, uh, but you know, anytime that there's something that comes up like that, I always love uh, hearing those stories. So. Yeah. yeah. As far as your interest in film, you know, throughout the years, three scenes that are just forever ingrained in your brain, something that maybe was terrifying. If it was traumatic, uh, maybe heartbreaking, uh, what comes to mind? It doesn't necessarily have to be horror movies, just things that are, are forever there for with you. Um, all right. Tough. This is a tough question, but um, the ones that come to mind are um, <laughs> weirdly uh, uh, the briefest of moments in um, that adaptation of Perfume. Um, okay. And I don't love the, the I mean, the movie, whatever, I'm not going to talk shit about a movie but like the, the movie isn't one of my favorites or anything but there's this moment where um dustin hoffman is like uh mentoring the the kid or or, or trying not to he's the the perfume genius and then granui comes and like mixes something together and does it so perfectly that when dustin hoffman's character smells it he realizes like you know that this kid's legit but in the time it takes for him to inhale the perfume, you see not only like, oh my God, this kid did it without measuring, which is impossible. And it's better than what I made. And he's better than I'll ever be. And I'm a hack. And you just see like his entire world crumble inside him. He doesn't say a word. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's like a very favorite acting moment. Awesome. Um, and it's an especially funny one because he's so like, blah, 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 like kind of over the top in it. And then all of a sudden he just like has this like a humbleness. perfect moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. Love that. There's, I guess this is another silent moment, but in, um, I don't remember the names of the characters, but in 13 Assassins, when the sort of like first show, who I think assembles the, the, the or not Shogun, um, Samurai, who, who, who assembles the rest of the, the, the Samurais, is brought to this like home in the middle of the night. Uh, if you remember the details, definitely jump in, but um, they, they, they bring out this woman who, who had her arms and legs cut off and, and she's like writing with, with her, a paintbrush in her mouth. Do you, you know, remember this? It's been a long time since I've seen that movie, but I remember this. I remember the scene. Yeah. So it, it it's just like, you know, they're like, this is what the Shogun has been doing. Like, this is how evil he is. You know, will you take on? And in the in the long and pretty graphic telling of just how bad this Shogun is that they want assassinated, um, the 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 samurai eventually has this this reaction. He 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 smiles maybe even laughs a little bit because he's like been looking for a a job or a task that's extremely worthy and he's so happy that he's going to most likely die taking down this absolutely evil man and i just it was so shocking you know because like he he's like stoic and, and professional and has honor and everything. And then he just starts laughing at the end of the most grisly tale. So anyway, I <laughs> love that choice 
loved that movie. Um, and then awesome. one isn't a moment, and I don't even think I can get into, like, I, <laughs> I don't even think I can describe the scene because I'll start crying. I can't, I can't handle it. But there's a scene in The Elephant Man that I, that like oh. branded my brain and um, breaks my heart. And it's, I, it's, it's, it's when he's in his room and then a bunch of people come in and I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and, and that's just uh, like the, the, the powerful thing, you know, whether it being theater, whether it being film, television, there are those moments, you know, where maybe even it's something that's not necessarily on screen, uh, yourself being an actress, uh, you know, that is just always so awesome to be able to see as far as, you know, different times where something maybe was just a line and then you taking on having that risk, you know, even you've mentioned with like uh, films like a, a Wounded Fawn and we'll dig into that, but that being something where, you know, you're kind of going and you have a certain day where these are the scenes that we're going to try to get and you, you know, try to make the jump and, and hopefully that is what it works. And sometimes there's just those moments where it's like, man, that is overly powerful. And I don't know how I can not cry watching this every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I will, I will need to, to take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so whether uh, now touching on, you know, some of these things and maybe even within horror or even without, you know, outside of that realm, anything uh, as far as film wise that's ever, you know, dawned on an irrational fear, something that you had never even thought of until seeing a movie, you know, all of a sudden you see Jaws and the water is terrifying or clowns. Uh, what comes to mind as far as that? Hmm. It's hard to say. I mean, I'm really afraid of spiders, but weirdly, when I saw arachnophobia, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so, um, when that started, I mean, it wasn't a movie, but for some reason, I ended up watching a bunch of stuff during Shark Week, and now I'm afraid of sharks. Even though I know, like, be afraid of sharks, it's it's pretty irrational. Not entirely irrational, yeah. but like pretty irrational. Yeah. Um, oh man, there is something. There is something. I mean, I mean, I th think I'm afraid of everything because of horror movies. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> like, don't look in mirrors. Don't, don't look under the, under the. I mean, you know, you don't have to watch movies to know that you don't look under the bed. <laughs> oh, right. In hereditary, <laughs> naked smiling men showing up at a funeral. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's somehow unsettling <laughs> i think maybe the movie emphasized that but however if you went through that as well i'm i'm sorry <laughs> yeah sorry. um yeah i don't know I, I yeah i don't know that anything comes to mind specifically okay okay yeah, yeah and w with what you mentioned too i mean that's great i, I think it's funny with sharks too especially and, you know, with some of the, you know, you have like Instagram or social media where they have the, the shorts, like the, the, those small videos. And I've been finding more and more videos of sharks just randomly coming up and biting people's boats. I don't know if this is just the universe of like straight up fucking with me and wanting me to see these things, you know, as like, no, it's not. It's, it is rational. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure this out still, you know, if this is just uh, social media messing with me and making me see all these things that are one in a million or uh, if that's a thing. But <laughs> <laughs> it's really scary. Um, now, as far as an early form of acting, does anything come to mind, you know, if you, if you had celebrated Halloween, uh, you know, taking on a costume maybe early on and really just taking on, you know, that character? And if so, what was that? And, uh, you know, how did it go as far as the costume and such? Um, there, there, there was a costume idea. I, I had a costume one year, and it wasn't anything like too specific, sort of a like spooky Victorian lady, you know. And then I decided that I really wanted her costume. I, I wanted her to be super tall. So before the next Halloween, um, I took a stilt walking class <laughs> and then rebuilt the, the costume that it could be like eight feet tall. Um, and that was really fun. Yeah. Now, was this uh, in like school or post? There's a, no, this is like, um, I think I was 18, 18 or 19 when I did that. Oh, okay. I was like, wow, you're showing up to high school with that. <laughs> you know, that's going over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was doing, a, I was doing a, a show that took place in a high school, and um, they, they 
included <laughs> my still walking in in like a Halloween episode of the of the series, which was kind of funny. But oh yeah. dang, okay, okay. <laughs> Now, that might go right into, I was going to mention, you know, as far as your first versions of acting, you know, kind of pre, like, working on film or anything like that. Uh, was it, were, did you take part in theater? Did you have maybe movies that you were making with friends that, uh, you know, you're doing remakes of popular uh, films at all? Not really. Um, not really movies. I mean, um, all putting on plays and uh, making everyone stop what they were doing and watch something I think I did. Um, I did, did take some like theater classes. There was like a mask class and clowning stuff and mime stuff. Which, oh, uh, really? Yeah, which was actually, I, I revisited that like later on in my 20s and, and actually love it maybe more than any other kind of acting I've done. It's fascinating and, mm -hmm. and exciting um there wait what was i oh but um i, I had so i grew up in the 80s or like whatever i was born in 82 so there were camcorders around and stuff like that but not everywhere when i was young my uncle had one like right from the jump and he would film everything like absolutely everything there he would like set up the camera in the basement while we were playing and just let it run so like there was always a camera around when i was with my cousins um so i don't know if that was an influence but on the other hand like having a camera pointed at your face at the most inopportune moment doesn't feel that <laughs> a lot of unknown improv you're just kind of going off of uh you know doing whatever a little kid's doing and playing running around yeah. playing yeah <laughs> okay uh, but now how does your your first you know work in film go like did you did you go to was there like college influence or did you go as far as anything like that or how did you know you get introduced as far as working yeah i started as a kid so i um uh my parents were like you seem to like acting do you want to go audition for this thing. Uh, it was a play in Calgary where I lived in Canada and uh, I got the part, which is sort of like, I think, you know, it's like at the casino, if you, if you win right away, you, you think that maybe you like, yeah, on top got, of the world. Like you yeah. can never <laughs> win that, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so I got that first audition. And then when I was going to rehearsals and everything, I was 10 at the time, um, I had to have a, a parent, like a guardian or a chaperone with me. And so my mom was there hanging out with the other, with the rest of the cast and, and they convinced her to become um, a talent agent um, because Calgary didn't have very many at the time. So then she was my agent, of course, and like, you know, started auditioning for, for other stuff and, and it just sort of carried on from there. Um, I mean, I th think, you know, there aren't a lot of kid actors. So if you can rack up a lot of credits when you're young, it like really gets you um, gets you ahead later on. So, so that's kind of how it started. I, I just I don't know how to do anything else. So that's why I, <laughs> I'm still doing it. <laughs> sure. Was was there earlier on like lots of conversations as far as dad, you know, and saying like, now look, you have to save every penny that you have or were you kind of really into, I'm going to go and party for what I can? <laughs> it wasn't, it, it was shopping. I mean, I did yeah, some, right. I just spent money like crazy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> have like, sometimes, especially if it's supposed to last you a long time, a, a, a certain amount of money can seem like a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, necessarily. So, right. so now, Man, I wish I would have uh, saved a lot more of that money. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so from from those experiences, was there a particular time working on a set, um, or you know, somebody that kind of influenced you as far as taking on other roles, such as directing? I don't know. You have different credits, but um, how how do you end up, you know, getting into getting into that? And was it uh, just the first steps of initially learning that that art? I mean, I. I think I'm still trying to figure out how to start doing it. It's something that I um, would would like to do, and um, you know, I mean, I think before I started acting or or you know, as a kid, I, I liked writing, so I'd mm. like to do more of 
that. The, I am doing more of that. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. yeah it's the, the pandemic helped, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know, great time to start because there's not a whole lot else going on. And um, yeah, so slowly trying to figure out how to, how to do that. I have a short film that I'm working on and uh, hope to have finished this year but it's a uh, it's hard it's hard work yeah <laughs> I, I can only imagine you know from from the opportunity of being able to do these that's the biggest thing to where you know for the longest time you kind of think of art as you know somebody with a paintbrush or somebody you know with that but all of the aspects uh is are truly amazing as far as when it comes into film and looking into cinematography and costume design and yeah. uh there's so 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 much that goes on with that um yeah. you had you had mentioned with the short film was that something that you were thinking about as far as directing as well or was this just like a writing project yeah writing and directing and then i'll act in it because uh i'm thinking of it mostly as a like a trial exercise you know see see how it goes see if i actually do enjoy it <laughs> you know like maybe i'll do it like i hate this i never <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I've I feel like I've noticed, and maybe this is just me and I uh, being unaware, but it feels like you know, like maybe even the last five or ten years that there's been a lot of talent that have grown from shorts. And I, I guess I just mean as far as you think of like within the '80s and Steven Spielberg's and you know, kind of the bigger cats were all just like jumping right into a film. But um, I, I've I've seen a lot of talent that's come out of shorts and different people picking up. Uh, I feel like uh, Fide Alvarez, who did like the remake of the the Evil Dead, um, he had had work with short films and just people, you know, picking up talents from that. So, um, but you you mentioning it being a good exercise as far as like maybe I'm gonna hate this. I maybe I don't want to spend eight weeks filming something. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm approaching it as an exercise. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, that's probably. I mean, that, that's definitely smart for sure. <laughs> um, now, as far as within, uh, you know, within Wounded Fawn, you know, we, you've had years now of experience in acting and different things. And I was trying to conjure up to where I'm not going to be taking up your whole day and spending hours and conversation about all these things, uh, but with your, your latest film. So um, this just, you know, recently, it came out uh, in December, correct? On Shutter? Yeah. Okay, awesome. With, now in, in some interviews, you've mentioned describe, you know, describing as far as the initial read through as very visual. And I wanted to dig into that as far as, uh, you know, how maybe you imagined certain sequences, how they were initially, and then maybe how they ended up being, you know, filmed and some things that maybe impressed you as far as from the initial imagination to what was shot. Yeah. I mean, I mean, truly the script was like, um, there's a bunch of fabric floating with images on it. Um, it's hard to tell what it is because it's diaphanous and, and moving and um, surreal. And that's exactly what it ended up being. Uh, so, so the descriptions in the script were, um, were really detailed and pretty specific, even in terms of sort of like how they worked, you know? Um, so, seeing it it was like oh yeah there it is that's probably not exactly what i imagined but it wasn't like a huge uh, surprise however um there's the like in the the, the introduction of tisiphany when she like rises into camera and like vol's music is just <laughs> doing this like really epic thing um i wasn't i wasn't actually prepared for what a like moment that was uh, oh. so when i saw oh that, wow okay really, I was really stoked. Like it's, you, know, you kind of hope as an actor to get like a couple of like mega entrances for your character in your career, and that that one counts. Um, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. Now was was that you know I I guess that would be you know type of a moment. But were there certain aspects, maybe the masks or. Uh, maybe certain elements of the movie where you hadn't gotten to see until, uh, or you, you didn't get to see until shooting? Um, I mean, no, no, not really. I mean, I didn't get to rehearse with the snakes. So the snakes, it was like, let's see, how, let's see what they do. They're snakes, you know? You gotta think you can train a snake. So we were kind uh, of, even they were, and they were the best. Um, but yeah, I don't think I, I didn't 
can feel like there are too many surprises. I was there early and um, so got to see different tests and things too. So okay, awesome. it, it was nice to sort of show up and be like, okay, I know where I know where we're at. You know? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. With within, you know, uh, maybe even bringing us back to day one of shooting, you know, you, you, you mentioned getting on set and uh, what did that first day bring as far as uh, the, the scenes that were being shot? On the first day we shot the driving stuff. Um, okay. uh, so we were, I forget what the name of the bridge is. I don't know New York very well, but yeah, I don't remember the name of it. Anyway, we were just driving in this loop back and forth over this bridge um, with the van tailing us. Um, and so it was, it was really like, you know, 12 hours or whatever spent shooting two and a half pages or something like that, um, which was cool. Uh, logistically, it was pretty complicated, actually, with traffic and um, getting around. So um, we definitely needed a lot of time. But Josh and I were able to, like, kind of, I mean, establish the character's relationship in that. And it was especially fortuitous because... Um, um, the characters are doing the same thing at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, they're, I mean, they'd met before, of course, but it's sort of like, okay, let's get to know each other a little bit better. And that's exactly what we were, <clears throat> that's what was exactly what we were doing. So it worked in our favor. It was a really hot day. We didn't have any air conditioning in the old car <laughs> and we had those up for sound. So we were just like, like just pouring sweat. It was not... <laughs> ever comfortable on set like it's always too cold or too hot or it's raining so it wasn't like a big deal but it was like Phew, that was a that was a long ass day you know? <laughs> the van either they couldn't see what we were shooting we couldn't hear each other because like we were separated it was it was funny oh man okay now was the was the whole film shot in new york in new jersey oh uh, new Jer oh okay i thought had this one day that was sort of like across the bridge from New Jersey to into New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Now, like as far as like the cabin and everything, was that really as desolate as it seemed and just way out in the middle or? No, not at all. It was oh. like in Princeton. Um, and it was just this like beautiful, I don't know how many acres, but like a, a, a large lot, but it was just in a neighborhood. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, from from that, like, were there moments? There's there's a moment where you know you mention or or uh, there's a mention of a weirdest job, you know, type of things. Were, was there improv that was involved in days like that? You have twelve hours and you're going over lines and maybe something. Oh, okay. Oh, we didn't improvise a thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, not even uh, Josh didn't either. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, okay. Like, okay. Who was going to it would probably be him, but no, it was like really. Not text perfect, but yeah. Got you. With okay, oh yeah, and so I mean, I wanted to touch on as far as within your character Meredith, and you know, the effect of her not seeming as a naive character coming into this. You know, going through what she's going through, and then kind of going from one step and then entering into this different phase, and it being a confident, you know, competent choice. Sometimes you have movies where you're like. Why are you doing this? Or what, what exactly is it that's happening here? Who, you know, maybe come to mind as far as maybe some female or, or femme characters in film that really, uh, you know, maybe have influenced, not directly, but, uh, you know, had that in mind where it was like, man, I, I appreciate that this person was, was a badass in this movie. Um, for, for this one, I thought a lot about um, Jane Fonda and Clute. I really Oh, liked. okay. <laughs> she, was a, she was a big, like, kind of, touch point for the character um in particular the way the, the the way she she sort of chose to to do the scene with the therapist I, do you remember i think i think there were several scenes but it was maybe like cut, cut up and interspersed throughout the movie uh, um but she was so i don't i don't even know there was just something really like clear and direct about her you know sure. like she, Knew, she knew who she was and this therapist is sort of trying to be like do you feel bad about being a sex worker and she was just like no <laughs> like yeah no no that's not an issue yeah. like i'm fine with that 
but you, that what we're here for <laughs> it was just like so yeah the, 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 this articulate character who's still trying to figure things out like she had a lot going on you know she wasn't like a superman or anything like that like very much a, a complicated or complex human person mm -hmm. but yeah yeah that that uh that quality she had was was really appealing to me it's like okay awesome it was there's a moment where you're packing you're getting ready to leave you know for the trip and you're going through you're sifting through some records was there anything as far as that lsd record was that something personal to you or you know what where where did that come into play as far as grabbing that seven inch there's a whole story with that song and that record or i just won't ask and i can edit that out <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we're gonna give it a couple of years before yeah, yeah, yeah. We, before we get into it but um sure. yeah there was a song that travis uh travis had gotten me a couple of like records for christmas birthday maybe and and we heard this one song and he was like that's just a, a great song and it was called lsd and then this movie you know is like you know trippy and dreamy and surreal and so sure so that, i love it that, that's it. that's as much as i'll say about it perfect yep no <laughs> that, that, that's perfectly fine i i as, as as soon as you know a little bit of the reaction i was like oh well i can i can do my part here and <laughs> not big, go there <laughs> like, like a juicy story or anything it's just um it's just like a a, a minor heartbreak disappointment happened yeah. whatever there's just, just a story around yep. it and no, not, they, not, not, not a problem not a problem at all so long to hear this story yeah. why yeah <laughs> okay what what about as far as the final day uh you know the final shots that you had as far as coming into this and and uh you know wrapping up on on, on filming uh this movie here a wounded fawn the 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 last day with everyone uh the last shot of that day was um, the the credit scene, the the very final scene of the movie. Um, but the very last shot we did was the next, not quite the next day, kind of the next day. Um, it was just me and like, like a splinter crew doing the the glitter face. Um, oh, so wow. very, very 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 last thing we did. Oh, okay, dang, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Did you get to keep anything from the set as far as after filming? Um, I kept um, a couple pieces of wardrobe. Um, Travis has the statue. Um, oh, oh man! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that was uh, that was so incredible. We uh, it was just in here actually in our living room. Um, a friend of his came over. I invited a bunch of friends over. We posed, sort of moved all the furniture out of the living room, and he did. There's like an app where you can take these 3d pictures so we had a we, we all posed in the, the way that like travis had imagined the statue and then he 3d imaged us and then he printed 3d printed that sculpture i mean he also had to like craft it you know um but uh and then he painted it to look like metal or like bronze oh <laughs> shit so you're saying the the actual sculpture that was in the film that was yeah Holy shit. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Now, was there like, was there anything as far as, you know, with the art pieces and different things like that, was there anything as far as that maybe you had brought in or something that, you know, really like art uh, was, was uh, uh, special to you or something where you're like, man, I would have wanted to bring that home uh, as far as, you know, just all the pieces that were involved in this. Um, there, there were some pieces of art in set deck that I really loved. Uh, you don't, they don't get like a lot of screen time, but they're against this red wall in the dining room and they kind of look like these hand like blobs. Oh yeah. I really love Okay. <laughs> and, uh, that was one of the, I think props guy, one of the guys in the art department, his, his partner is a sculptor and she had, you know, let us use some of her, some of her art. So I would have loved to have been able to afford some of those sculptures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always fun. And especially with art pieces or things, you know, like with this movie, you know, where everything is very kind of drawn around this and, and, you know, art being a very big thing and color being, you know, uh, the, the reds throughout, um, I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, that's just kind of something where I always wonder, I'm like, what happens to this stuff? Like, do they just have, you know, it goes into another, you know, like storage container until maybe another like project or yeah. God, it's so cool. Yeah. 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 It depends. Oh, man. Yeah. Some of that stuff was 
just on loan, so. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, I mean, so, so awesome. And and the movie, honestly, was incredible. Uh, I was very happy to see that it had come on Shutter. I didn't know if it was going to be like a theater type thing, um, but I've watched it on more than one occasion, watched it last night just to see if there's different things to pick up here and uh, and have fun with. And I feel like every time I watch it, there's actually something else that's like maybe hidden in the background. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't even notice that. So lots of lots of fun in it and uh, a very good time. So that's uh, incredible. And I appreciate your work. And thank you very much for the time today. This has been awesome. Yeah, I'm so happy. You, uh, I'm so happy you enjoyed it. I really love the movie. So anytime anyone else does, it's, totally. it makes me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this has been awesome. You take care and then enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, cool. We'll be in touch. Bye. See ya. You're so lo-fi, lo-fi, a whole other guy. Yeah, baby, baby. Lo-fi horror guy has been recorded in front of a live studio audience.